For fans of various series, the biggest thing that can get them antsy for what comes next is that of a cliffhanger. At times, they happen at the end of a season to tease what will happen next time. Others get you right at the end of an episode so that you are sure to come back for more next week. And then, for some shows like Ozark, they divide up their season and drop their cliffhangers at the end of one part to really make you wonder how things are going to end when the second half debuts. Allow us to show you how the Ozark Season 4 boss teases how final episodes will end. Number 5. Why divide up the final season? The drama series Ozark has constantly been one of Netflix's most popular and most acclaimed original shows, but it comes to an end in 2022 with the debut of the series' fourth and final season. However, fans didn't get the final episode in one blow. Rather, season 4 has been split in two parts with the first batch of seven episodes out right now for viewing on Netflix. Showrunner Chris Mundy explained to The Wrap in an interview that the decision to split the final season in half was a consequence of trying not to overstay their welcome, and the idea came directly from Netflix. We always thought five seasons was the outside number, Mundy said figuring out when to end the series. It just felt like after that, we didn't want to repeat ourselves. We didn't want the show to feel like it was continuing because it was a TV show and it had to continue. So really, the decision has always been between its four seasons or its five seasons. And then Netflix hit upon the idea of saying, we'll do four, but we'll make it long and split it in this way. And it felt perfect. Indeed, as Mundy and the writers began working on season four of the show, they realized 10 episodes wouldn't be enough to wrap up the story. And season 4 begins immediately where season 3 left off with Jason Bateman's Marty Byard and Laura Lindley's Wendy Byard dealing with a fallout of crime boss Navarro's violent actions. We could make these 7 episodes feel complete and make the second 7 feel complete, even though it's all a continuum. I feel like 10 would have been enough to tell the story in a way we wanted to. So any number over 10 and under 20 was going to be good in my book. However, when breaking down season 4's two parts, Mundy and the writers looked at them as two different seasons, in order to give viewers a complete experience both times. When we worked in the writer's room on it, we called them 401 and 407, and 501 and 507, because we wanted to think of them the way that people were going to be experiencing them. But again, knowing that at some point someone's gonna watch them all together and they needed to feel, it's a bit of a trick in that way. They got a feel of One Piece, but they've also got to be satisfying when you sit down to watch the seven and you're gonna have to wait months for the next. We wanted to make sure that they felt complete. Number four, how part one ended. The opening of season four starts with a flash forward of the Byards in a car. Where are they going? How long have they been traveling for? Then the car shockingly flips off the road. The answer to those questions, along with the fate of the Byards, remain largely unknown throughout the first part of the season. The remainder of the season sees Marty, Jason Bateman, and Wendy, Laura Lindley, attempt to broker a deal with the FBI on Omar Navarro's Felix Salas behalf a deal that will see him retire from the cartel with immunity from prosecution. Of course, as we've learned in the past seasons, this task isn't without its pitfalls. With Ruth, Julia Garner, as her right-hand woman, Darlene, Lisa Emery, continues dealing heroin, much to the dismay of Navarro's cartel. Marty is also told to stop Darlene from distributing drugs, which becomes a little more difficult when his son, Jonah, Skylar Gartner, begins working for her, laundering money behind his back. We're also introduced to Omar's nephew, Javi, Alfonso Herrera, who causes a lot of trouble for the Bayards by foiling their negotiations with the FBI and killing off several important characters. More on that later. The shocking twist ending comes in the last few minutes of the final episode where Javi, on a power high, following his successful dealings with the FBI, fatally shoots Darlene and Wyatt, Charlie Tehan, in retaliation for them failing to cease distributing heroin. 
Ruth uncovers their body and once again parallels Zeki before threatening the Bayards after finding out Javi is the killer. Marty pleads with her to not get involved before screaming back, if you want to stop me, you're going to have to effing kill me. The first part ends on a pretty big cliffhanger, with Ruth driving away from the Bayards, her destination unknown. Considering that part one arguably has an ambiguous ending, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered in part two. Number three, marriage and family. The second part of Ozark's fourth season is going to focus on marriage and family, the drama showrunners have revealed. Following the release of season four's first batch of episodes on Netflix, Ozark boss Chris Mundy has offered to tease of what's to come when we return to the Bayard's family for the show's concluding episodes. The final tease really comes down to Marty and Wendy. Mundy told Entertainment Weekly, adding that Julia Garner's Ruth Langmore will also remain integral to proceedings. We usually frame everything through the marriage, as much as Ruth is this gigantic part of the show obviously, he continued. For the Bayards, at a certain point, the final seven to me are about, at what time is this healthy to stay in? And at what time is it healthy to get out, in terms of that partnership? And so to me, I really think that the back seven is pretty intensely about marriage and family, and Ruth is an extension of that family. Mundy also opened up about where the idea for season four's first seven episodes came from, explaining that he wanted to look at the Bayard's big picture, as well as their reaction to the events of the third season. We take a look at what's still lingering in the aftermath of season three that we have to address that these people would have to address in their lives, and that the people who watched the show were going to want answers too, he said. Number two, Jason Bateman. Speaking of Ozark's ending, Jason Bateman, AKA Marty, recently confirmed that he does indeed know how the series will ultimately end. I don't know where everything is going to end, he said via IndieWire. I was interested in the big question, Chris Mundy, has the opportunity to answer. Are they going to get away with it? Or are they going to pay a bill? What does he want to message to the audience about the consequences of what the Bayards have done or lack thereof, he teased. We had some great conversations about that, and he's really got good ideas about that, specifically of what kind of happens at the end of the last episode. I know, it's great. This show has honestly been known for its collaboration between the writer team and the actors. That's why certain characters honestly got bigger roles going forward with the show, such as Wendy. So if they're all on board with how the show is going to end, then that's something that should comfort fans. Number one, the end. In many ways, the pilot and series finale are the two hardest episodes to make for a whole. Because if the pilot isn't good, then the networks won't pick it up and people won't watch it beyond the first episode. But if you screw up the series finale, you could argue that the show ended in a way that was a waste. And sadly, over the past decade alone, there have been many shows that have had a bunch of terrible series finales. However, Ozark might be able to break that streak and as a result, fans are going to be eagerly waiting for part two of season four to drop. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at Ozark's season finale and how things are potentially going to shake out when the time comes? Do you think that Ozark will be able to stick the landing in order to make sure that fans of the series are satisfied with what has happened? What do you personally think that will happen in the final seven episodes? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on the channel.